Hello everyone, this is Rakiba. This is Elsa. And this video will show you about the culture differences between China and Bangladesh. So let's start. Okay, there's our today's video content. We will talk about cultural identity, social customs and norms, religious festivals, the intercultural challenges, misconception this content have about the other's culture. And let's talk about cultural identity. So Rakipa, introduce yourself, please. Oh, thank you. Hi, my name is Rakipa, I have already mentioned, and I'm from Bangladesh. I follow Muslim religions, and I like to wear hijab with my national dresses. So what about you, Elsa? Okay, I'm a Chinese woman from the largest ethnic group in China, the Han Chinese. And I'm also an atheist. Okay, and let's talk about the social customs. So, uh, like uh, in China, Chinese people now generally wear a Western dress like a business suit on formal occasions, such as giving public speeches in daily life. They mostly wear t-shirts. And about the traditional Chinese dress like Hanfu and Qi Pao, they are mainly worn for special occasions such as Chinese weddings and Chinese festivals. Okay, about Bangladesh, um, they have diversified clothing preferences. Kruta and Longji are traditional cultural wear for men. On formal occasions, men usually wear a Western type dress or traditional Punjabi and uh, pajamas. Sari is a men and the traditional dress of women. During the wedding ceremony, the bride generally wear a traditional Bangladesh dress, and on the second day, they put a Western dress up. So let's talk about the religion belief. Okay. In Bangladesh, the majority of Bangladesh population identifies as Muslim, about 90, 89%. 89%. Yeah. While the second largest religious group being Hinduism, about 10%. A remaining 0.9% of population identifies with some other religions, including Buddhism and Christianity. And in China, China is a country where atheist 52.2% is official and the religious population is a minority. So based on 2020 data, the largest religious group in China is Buddhism, 18%, and followed by other religions like Catholicism, Taoism, Islam, and Protestantism. They are the minority level in China. Okay, let's move on to the festivals. So in Bangladesh, there are four types of festivals. There are religious, cultural, national, and the tribal festival. And in China, there are three types of festivals, religious, cultural, and national. So in Bangladesh, religious festivals are the majority. People arrange it according to their own religions and kindly invite people from different religions to join in. However, there is a motto in Bangladesh. Each religion is for his or her. Festivals are for all. And for China, religious festivals are mainly celebrated by religious people. It is minority group in China. For example, Christian or Buddhism, they go to church to celebrate their, their occasions. And uh, about cultural festivals, in Bangladesh, there are uh, Bangladesh New Year, and about the national festival, they have Independent Day on 26 March and International Mother Language Day on 21st February. And last is uh, tribute festivals. And in China, they have the Mid Autumn Festival. is is about on the middle of the year. And uh, they have the national festivals. This is in National Day on the 1st October. So let's talk about the intercultural challenges. So it's concerning the giving gift. In Bangladesh, giving someone a cup and watch as gift is very common. 
Because cop brings good luck and watch brings good time sense. It shows the people concerned about your future. So on the other hand, China has opposite meaning. In China, it is unlucky to send cups and clocks as gifts because their pronunciation of cup is similar to the Chinese word tragedy, like basi, and for the watch, it's similar to Chinese watch, like song song in Chinese pinyin. It means running out of time. So it seems that Chinese cup and watch this both bring the ne negative meaning. So let's talk about the misconception discussions have about the other cultures. So here we will talk about between China and Bangladesh. Okay, um, the stereotypes about Bangladesh are mainly related to the status of women and religion. I pre previously thought that women experience severe oppression in Bangladesh. For example, female doesn't have good education support and female doesn't have higher position in the political system. And are they true? In fact, after the 1971 independent war of Bangladesh, the women didn't have good education. However, in the last 15 years, Shiki Hasina, the prime minister of Bangladesh, creates advantage for women in education, economy, political side, and so on. So compare with other countries, Bangladesh is in good position of women's empowerment nowadays. The government has increased its focus on women's empowerment and gender equality, and has pushed for greater recognition of women voters by politicians. In addition, Bangladesh has developed female-oriented policy and established a number of non-government organizations and microfinance banks to provide assistance to poor women in education or employment. And next, concerning the religion, I used to think that all the people are, are supposed to be Muslim in Bangladesh and the rulers of religion were harsher especially to women. Muslim women must wear the hijab and even the veil. However, based on our conversation, now I realize that Bangladesh is more open. It is not mandatory to wear hijab for all women. Actually, it depends on to person. Besides, it is non-essential choice for Muslim women to wear the hijab and the veil. It's not as harshly regulated. So let's talk about the Bangladeshi people's stereotypes regarding China. So before coming here, I thought that all Chinese people know Kung Fu and they can fly. However, the reality is absolutely not. Most of the Chinese people even haven't learned Chinese Kung Fu at all. So according to Lin et al. 2022, around 35% of Chinese population practice the Kung Fu. And another stereotypes I had, I thought that Chinese people are not friendly and they like to stay away from other cultures. But here, still I am wrong and I realized that they are very much helpful people and although they and they are shy to make new friends if anyone is your friend they are very good at keeping relationship so in the conclusion we want to mention that we learn each other's country including these six parts and we mainly focus on the misconceptions so and we found that we both similarities and differences together so even Though we have some misconceptions about the two cultures, however, we also fix them and adopt each other. So that's all about our video. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. This is our reference list.